The city of Colossae sat in the Lycus Valley in Asia Minor, about a hundred miles east of Ephesus. The valley was a natural thoroughfare, not only for goods and people, but for ideas as well. Colossians, in many ways, is a mirror image of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Ephesians emphasizes the body and her relation to Christ, the head. Colossians emphasizes the head and his relation to the body. When talking about the benefits of psalms and hymns and spiritual songs being sung to the Lord, Paul tells the Ephesians that the precursor is being filled with the Spirit. When he speaks to the Colossians about the same thing, he links it instead with letting the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Several dangerous ideas had made their way to Colossae, and we see Paul's concern for the saints there. But before we deal with the devil's trap line in chapter 2, he wants to fill their vision with the magnificence of Christ. In chapter 1, we discover one of Paul's pattern prayers. The apostle to the Jews recorded no pattern prayers for their audience in the general epistles, because the Jewish nation had a long and rich history of such prayers in the Old Testament. The Gentiles, on the other hand, had been worshiping sticks and stones. We had no idea about talking to the God of heaven. So Paul included about 15 prayers for our learning. Why we don't pray them more is puzzling. After all, we know that they've been pre-approved, exactly matching the will of God, because they're inspired by the Holy Spirit. First, this prayer provides seven requests for the Christians to include in our intercession. Then he includes seven reasons to be thankful, followed by seven wonders of Christ for our worship. The four warnings in chapter 2 repeat the phrase, beware lest anyone, or something similar. There was the danger of Eastern mysticism, a false view of the heart, Greek intellectualism, a false view of the mind, Jewish legalism, a false view of the will, and asceticism, a false view of the body. In each case, Christ is applied as the answer. All the treasures of wisdom are in Him. In Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Christ in you, the hope of glory. In all things, he must have the preeminence. With these lofty thoughts, chapter 3 opens with the words, Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Better advice was never given. Then follow instructions, similar to the Ephesian epistles, on Christ's lordship, personal stewardship, and practical relationships. Chapter 4 gives us some tender personal insights into first century Christian friendships. All in all, the whole letter is redolent with the perfume of Christ. And that's our scripture snapshot of Colossians.